Good afternoon, RSBN viewers. We are live from day two of CPAC 2022. I'm Grace Aldana, and I'm joined by the Scott Pressler. How are you doing today? Life is good. I tell you, the energy, the excitement, the enthusiasm, the amount of young people. I'm really inspired to see what can happen this November. Me too, and you're working the hardest of any person I've seen. Uh, you are going from state to state every day. I see on your, your, your list you keep up. This state, I'm going to be in this city, in this city, this state. It's insane what you're able to do. Thank you. Well, and I can't do this alone. You know, this is a shout out to every mom and every couple that's invited me to stay in their homes across the country. I mean, people pick me up from the airport. You know, it's been the RSBN viewers who have been just so open with their hearts and homes to me that I'm allowed to do this work. Absolutely. Well, it's it's incredible, and I kind of want to talk a little bit about Texas because I think that is the uh, mm. first primary that is coming up right here in March. Is it next week or the week after? Yes. Yeah, so today, the 25th of February, is the last day to vote in person early. In person so after early. today, the only way that you can vote is voting in person on Election Day on March 1st, primary day. Incredible. So what are you seeing in Texas? What are you hearing about it? How's the voting going? Well, it's going to be interesting. So, you know, Texas is a 50% plus one state. And that's why we're seeing such incredible turnout. Because, you know, some people, I think they're unhappy with some of the governor's actions in terms of the uh, mask mandates, in terms right. of businesses. And so they're fired up about some of the other candidates. You know, I know Governor Greg Abbott is running for re-election. You also have Senator Huff Fines. You also have Colonel Allen West. You also have Chad Prather. And we have a wealth of other candidates who are running. And so, you know, if you are unhappy with uh, the current leadership or if you want to make a change, the best way to empower yourself to do so is to vote. But let me tell you about Houston, Texas, because the reason why I wear cowboy boots that you can't see, but I always have them on, is my first job was working in Galveston, Texas, below Harris County, Houston. And that's a really blue area. But here's the important information, Grace, is that in early voting, which includes vote by mail and early in person, we are out performing, out voting the Democrats. And you know, our people usually vote in person on election day. So if we already have a lead going into March 1st, I'm very encouraged to see what's going to happen on Tuesday. Absolutely. It's always the other way around. The Democrats usually lead in mail-in ballots. Yes. So that means people are fired up and they are ready for this red wave that's coming and they don't want to see Texas go blue. No. You hear all this talk, oh, Texas is going to go purple, it's going to go blue. I don't think they're having it. Well, and who is just in the state of Texas? None other than the Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Notice she's benefiting maskless speaking at her event you know while being a proponent of the mask wearing of the state government mandates it's just it's so hypocritical but no the people of texas i mean look these are political refugees right, right. they're fleeing from california they're fleeing from the left west coast and they're going to states like texas florida north carolina because conservative values work Absolutely. And so we're about 10, 11, or sorry, nine months out from the November general election. Are you going to be focusing on any specific regions up till then? Oh, girlfriend, girlfriend. Here's <laughs> where I'm focused on. Well, and I want to make this clear. Uh, every state matters. All 50 states matter. Uh, every territory matters. But in terms of, I'm really focused on making sure that we take the House and Senate because if we don't have the House, that means that we can't hold Fauci accountable by having a select committee. That means that we can't hold Joe Biden accountable for the debacle in Afghanistan with the select committee. That means that we can't hold Joe Biden accountable for flying illegal immigrants across the country when he wouldn't fly home Americans left behind in Afghanistan, that he wouldn't evacuate Americans who are in Ukraine before war started in that country. And so we must have the House, which means we need five seats in order to take it. So I'm very focused on Arizona, Florida, Georgia, 
Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and the state of Nevada, which I do think is vulnerable and flippable. And if you at home, and I hope I'm not talking too much, Miss Grace, you just no, let me ahead. know. But here are five districts that the viewer at home right now can focus on. Virginia Beach's second congressional district. Did you know Virginia Beach? It's actually home to the largest naval base in the entire world. No, I didn't. You know, know that. so this is military families. These are people who go, oh my gosh, Joe Biden left Americans behind. Oh my gosh, he gave billions of dollars to the Taliban, right? A terrorist organization. Right. And this area, Virginia Beach, voted for Joe Biden in 2020, but voted for Glenn Youngkin for governor by over eight percentage points. So to everybody in Virginia Beach and Norfolk, Virginia's second district is flippable. And we, Grace, what state are we in right now? The free state of Florida. Where there are now more registered Republicans than Democrats than that has never happened before in the state's history. It's beautiful. And we're focused <laughs> on Orlando. Stephanie Murphy is retiring, not running for re-election. So if you at home live in Orlando, Seminole County, Florida's seventh congressional district, and Grace, who is running for re-election for governor in the state of Florida? Ron DeSantis. And who is running against him? Mr. Charlie Chris, who's a congressman, who because he's running is vacating his seat, right? That means Florida's 13th congressional district, Pinellas County, is open. So I just want people to know that these efforts that I'm doing, I have a plan, I have a methodology behind it, and we're doing it strategically because I want more than anything to take the House and Senate. But you know what, even more so, I want to elect America First conservatives that, remember in 2016, we had the House, right. we had the White House, we had the Senate. But under Paul Ryan's feckless leadership, we were unable to pass a conservative agenda. So my goal is I want to make sure that we're not just taking the House and Senate, but we're electing people that are going to fight for election integrity, that are going to fight for medical freedom, that are going to fight for parental choice and education, that are going to secure that gosh darn border, that are going to fight for an internet bill of rights. And that, I believe, is the future of conservatism. Absolutely. So what <laughs> drives you, Scott? Because there's a lot of dedicated activists out there. A lot of people spend Monday through Friday um, doing all the grassroots activism. And you are just going above and beyond 24-7. You never stop. Like, what, what drives you? Thank you. Well, number one, the thing that drives me especially with my hair game, is making sure that I'm keeping up with you and Liz because the hair is always right, always looking Your good. Your hair is so glamorous this weekend, I can't even tell you. I know, whenever I come to RSBN with y'all, I'm like, uh, I have to look cute to keep up with the girls. But no, honestly, you know, I'm a young man, but I don't want to wake up when I'm 50 wishing that I had done more with my life. And so I understand that as I'm getting older, I feel a sense of mortality okay. and I have a better understanding of wanting to leave behind a legacy. You know, my dad is a retired Navy captain mm -hmm. and his father, my grandfather, was also a retired Navy captain. And I don't mean this disrespectfully to our military, to our veterans. I haven't served, but I feel like the work that I'm doing is serving in a different kind of way. And Indeed. so we're fighting for freedom. You know, this isn't really even about us. This isn't about future children. This is about the children's children that the rest of the world looks to America as that last shining beacon of hope and freedom. And if we fall here in our country, you can't go to Canada. Right. Look at Trudeau. You can't go to the United Kingdom. You can't go to Australia. You can't go to Ukraine. There's nowhere to go. We either fight here or it's done. And so if there's anyone listening to this that you've ever felt called to serve, I encourage you, now is that time that you are called to do something even bigger than yourself. And let's make sure that we have a decisive, overwhelming, America first, conservative victory this November.
and you can make a change. A lot of people feel discouraged by the drama, they hate their family, their friends, but you can make a change if you go out there and you canvas, if you sign up to be a poll watcher and do all these sorts of things. So I think that we truly need Americans to step up to the plate, just like you did. And, and look at you, RSBN, Right Side Broadcasting. Who would have ever thought <laughs> this independent organization would rival CNN, would rival Fox News, would rival all of the cable television. Look at what you guys have been able to Thank accomplish you, because you had a vision. So yes. now, and, and look at me, I started as a dog walker. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I started with a humble beginning. Right. But I believe in self-determining your future. And that if you have a dream, if you have a passion in life, I strongly encourage you to follow those dreams because we only have one shot at life, right? Right. This is it. And that is so inspiring. And, you know, I'm very happy that someone is going to document your journey very yes. soon. And our RSPN viewers were very excited to hear that as well. So what are the plans in motion for that? Well, I'm very privileged to announce that I'm going to be working with a Hollywood team that, you know, they've been in this industry and business for 25 years. So we're going to start production on a reality television show about my life. And we're going to start production in April when I come here to Florida. And the goal is, you know, what is my life like when I'm registering voters and when I'm staying at people's homes and working to take back the House and Senate and Right Side Broadcasting is going to be the distributor pushing this out to millions of people across the country. So, you know, we as conservatives always talk about affecting culture. This is going to affect the culture by giving people a different view of conservatism that they've never seen before. So I think this is going to open eyes. I think this is going to change hearts. And if we do a good enough job, who knows? Maybe we can get invited to the Emmys and maybe we can start affecting different parts of the culture that conservatives really haven't had a voice in. Right. Scott, you're going to go down in history as the best conservative <laughs> grassroots activist because it is, it's shocking what you're able to do and we're Thank so you. happy that you're doing it. How can people keep up with you? Thank you. Well, I'm on everything. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram. Gab Parlor, Truth Social. I mean, everything is at Scott Pressler, S C O T T P R E S L E R. And more importantly, you know, I ask that you don't just follow me. And I want you to follow Right Side Broadcasting, but more importantly, I want you at home to take action, become an Election Day worker register new Republican voters, call your legislators, and make a plan to vote on Tuesday, November 8th, 2022. And Grace, I just, I want to speak on behalf of everybody watching. We love Brian. We love you. We love Liz. We love the entire team, and we're so thankful for Right Side Broadcasting. And we love you, Scott. Thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> My pleasure.